Hello and welcome to another ARM Software Developer Breakdown. My name is Robert Wolf, and in this video, we're still hanging out with Paul Howard, Principal System Solution Architect from ARM, as we run through this demo series on Parsec, the platform abstraction for security. If you missed any of the previous parts to this series, please cruise on down to the description and find the part that you're on. In the last video, we went through the hardware requirements and software dependencies for this demo. So Paul, what do you have for us this time? Well, Robert, we're getting right down to it in this video. Uh, so remember that our Raspberry Pi is now prepped and ready. We've got Rust installed. We've got all of the prerequisites installed. Uh, so let's go build and run Parsec now. OK, let's head back to the Pi screen here. So here we are back on the Parsec homepage. Um, and this time, we are going to go ahead and scrape the URL of the GitHub repository uh, onto our clipboard. Let's just head up here. OK, let's just copy that to clipboard. And then let's head over to our shell and issue that magic git clone command, uh, paste in the URL there. And that will bring down our source code repository uh, onto the Raspberry Pi. This won't take very long. OK, there we go. So the next stage is to build the service. Now, Rust has a fully integrated build system called Cargo. It's very convenient, very smart. It's going to automate all of our dependency management for us. So actually, all we need to do here is just issue this single Cargo build command. Now, Rust has great support for feature flags. Uh, and Parsec uses feature flags to decide how many of the backend modules to compile into the service. Uh, Parsec's backend modules are called providers. And these are the pieces that understand how to talk to the platform-specific hardware features like TPM or HSM. And we're using two providers today. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a simple one based on the embed crypto library. It doesn't require any specialized hardware. But we also have one based on the PKCS11 interface. We're going to be making use of that one a little later in the demo when we bring in the Nitro key HSM. OK, now we've fired off this build. This is going to take a while. On a Raspberry Pi 4, this is going to take around 10 minutes, uh, a bit longer if you're using an earlier Raspberry Pi like a Model 3. Um, so I'm going to fast forward through this uh, as Cargo just automatically chugs through all of those various dependencies and builds them all up and builds the service for us. Let's just fast forward through this section now. OK, real easy. Uh, Parsec is built from the source, uh, and it's ready to run. Now, before we run Parsec for the first time, uh, we need to set up a couple of folders that the service will expect to exist uh, and will need access permissions for. Now, because this is a simple, quick start setup, I'm not going to create a special Parsec user to run the service. I'm just going to run it as the built-in Pi user here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to create these two folders and use the change owner command uh, to assign them ownership to the Pi user. So I need this run slash Parsec folder. And Parsec is going to use that to store the domain socket file uh, for communication between the service and its clients. And then I need this var lib parsec folder. Parsec's going to use that for all of its persistent storage uh, for things like key metadata. And with that, we are ready uh, to fire up the parsec service. Now I'm going to switch on some basic Rust logging so that we can see some chatter uh, to see what's going on. But it's just running the executable here. Uh, and after not too long, it tells us that parsec is ready. So that's the service up and running. What we need now is a way to start interacting with it. Uh, which we're going to do in the next video. So, Robert, it's back to you. All right. Well, that was thorough, and I hope you all were able to follow along from home. Now that Paul has set the foundation for this demo, I think it's time to showcase the Parsec command line tool. As a reminder, don't forget to like this video, follow our channel, and stay tuned, because in the next part of this series, Paul will explain the importance of the Parsec command line tool, what it does, and provide us with another crucial component of this ongoing demo.